does. So of course, as usual, seven a map pool. We removed six of them. We're left with the last one. And our setter is back to Clubhouse. Again, we, we looked at that Giants versus Fnatic game that was... Uh, I don't know, like Fnatic a bit too slow to get into the groove in the beginning, but I then think one di- one dimensional, right? Yeah, but but then it kind of completely ch- flipped on its head. You know, the both teams were so confident in what they were doing, uh, and I'm I'm I don't know who to place this on as being more comfortable between both Guts and Xavier. I mean, it's I, really hard to call. I would definitely say Guts because this historically has been their best map. Mm, uh, yeah, okay. when, you, when you have a look at, you know, things going in through Pro League and things like that, it's the map that uh, they they have banned against them a decent number of times. They've also had uh, more, it's, it, more wins than they've had losses on it. It kind of sits at the top there and they've played it quite a few times. So it's one mm-hmm. that they are, you know, probably a little bit more comfortable on. It's at the top of their map pool. Whereas when you look at Xavier, it's sort of, it's there, but they have the same number of wins as they do losses on it when you look at their results through Pro League. So it's, it sounds a little bit to me more like Guts are going to feel a little bit more confident on it. Uh, but that said, they come from different regions. They're not used to playing each other or anything like that. So we could end up being surprised. I, we've been surprised today already. I'm, I would not be surprised to be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would not be disagree. surprised to be surprised. You know. No, I agree. Absolutely. It is Xavier's second most played map. So I think coming into this, it's good for them. And also given how the Japanese teams played at the very start of the day in game one, very chaotic, very discoordinated in a lot of ways. I think going to map like Clubhouse does bring some structure. We all know Guts is a fragging team. So I'm hoping they can still bring up that gun skill, even on a map where it's more down to this team play. It's round to the checklist that we always speak about. All right. Well, we kind of get, given you guys have given your own analysis on this. Let's take a look at what people think about this back home with their uh, predictions guts gaming going for 75 percent to the 25 of xavier so uh, not even close we'll see how this translates though in game on clubhouse ladies and gentlemen our match is ready we're going to kick it off to our casters enjoy it's guts gaming versus guts gaming versus xavier on clubhouse you very much Milosh. G'day there guys it's the double Aussie casters for the first time here in the APAC North League ready to cast some APAC games and it is Guts versus Xavier. Jess how you feeling about this one? Ooh APAC best pack dev anyone who says otherwise they can get out of here and I tell you what if there's ever a matchup to go head to head here I mean you and I have known Xavier the players on Xavier specifically for ages years so if we're looking at guts they better put up a damn good show to take over those really experienced players of Xavier yeah, no doubt. But Geo does have a good point. The viewers as well, 75% tilting towards Guts. And I've got to admit, I am kind of on their side here. Guts had beat Cyclops, who's the top team from Japan on Clubhouse in the past, and drawn against Nora, one of Japanese's best teams. But here we are on Clubhouse for Guts Gaming versus Xavier. It is Japan versus Thailand. Let's get stuck running into it. I am extraordinarily excited here, Dev. I tell you what, Clubhouse is my favorite map since they did the rework ever so long ago now. I am just hyped. Every time you jump onto Clubhouse, you're expecting, okay, what are the bands going to do to the teams? It changes how every team plays. If Maverick is left in play, you can almost guarantee there's no need to go underneath, deal with the breach denial in any other way. So I'm really happy that we're seeing the bands coming out in this format because Guts gets the ban first and that might set a precedent for Xavier. <laughs> the Monty, I like this one. We've already seen a Southeast Asian team abuse the hell out of Monty here in our Giants versus Fnatic game. So Xavier, I mean, there are a lot of APAC teams that do love the Monty. Xavier being one of them. Guts don't want to deal with that at all. We know the Japanese style. They love their gunfights. Can't really take a gunfight with a guy who's got a shield in front of his face. And then for Xavier to reply with the Thatcher band, leaving that Maverick in jest that you mentioned earlier. That's going to be really integral for the attacking team. Xavier will start on attack, so maybe they'll have a little bit of breathing room so that they can get those walls open, those hatches, if they are kaid If we don't see a Kaid ban here, I'm hoping we actually see one, but might might be getting rid of something else like a Wamai or something other that might stint the push of Xavier. And it's going to be a Valkyrie instead, and that's a lot of intel off the board, but we've still got Maestro. We've still got a lot of other operators. I mean, you can even run Castle with a bullet 
bulletproof camera, a lot of other operators. So it doesn't do too much, but that's a C4 off the board as well, which is also used on sites like CCTV, et cetera. So we'll see if that really impairs them. I don't think it's going to do too much, but we'll see if the Maverick plays are implemented the way they're meant to and Red Sun's gonna rock it for the first round. Church and Arsenal first up. You mentioned the Kaid not banned, but also not taken thus far. Perhaps Lily is going to six pick. No, in fact, it looks to be an SSG roam, our favorite, Jess. We haven't actually seen an SSG roam so far. I don't think we saw any yesterday from uh, from the EUL and haven't seen any tonight from APAC. So here's the lowdown of this strategy. You're defending the bottom floor bombsite, typically a fortress of hard breach that the attackers will need to take. But the first step is always to clear map control. So the idea behind this uh, covered name, coveted SSG hold is you use the castle, the mute, and the mozzie to just deny as much info as possible and enable those roamers to flourish. The SSG roam is one that has just taken hold all over the world. I mean, if you're not familiar with it, you can go back and check out SSG, who were the world champions at SI 2020. But if we come back to this match specifically, what they're hoping to achieve is to allow them to hold almost the entirety of the map open up the hatches and allow them to rotate back to the site very quickly Attack if they do get pinched. Now, the best way to counter this, if you're the attackers of Xavier, is to quickly rush dirt or blue. So we'll see if they're read into this room or whether they're just going to methodically go from top to bottom, clearing floor by floor by floor and moving down. They'll open up dirt to start off with and the only person there to counter them is light on the smoke. But... As you mentioned, being the smoke, that's the best possible operator to thwart this push. Yura's got an early engagement with Red Sun, who's been taken down injured, and Yura's going to find another one. This is nuts so far from Guts, and that classic Japanese aggression is stilting out Xavier here. Yura's not going to give it up. Hungry for more now, peeking on as the revive comes out. Red Sun back on his feet, but Sprongy just there, going to drone out, no doubt. Ooh, I think Yura was actually missed on the drone. Surely not. Surely the Jaeger can't do even more damage here. They've lost a lot of time having to pick Red Sun up. They actually thought he would peek again, and Red Sun throws his life out the door into Euro's line of sight. And, well, that's another pick that is putting Xavier in a really bad position here. That's going to be two hard breaches. They've got one more, but that's not really going to do much if they want to get a plant off. They've opened dirt with an exothermic, so they have one more left. I'm not sure whether he's going to use it, on possibly i mean he could use it on the church wall he could use it on the kitchen hatch we need to make sure whatever he uses that exothermic on has an impact because they've not got a lot of players left fighting from behind in a three versus five is xavier and as you mentioned just the one sole hard breach of the thermite remaining no real chance of countering any mute jammers that are stacked up on these walls though i wouldn't be surprised if mostly they're just on to deny drones not so much deny the breaching of the walls but it seems xavier are comfortable at least for now with their map control and are focusing primarily on executing onto the site moto hatch opened already by the defense i believe it was oh, actually i can't remember where the uh, exothermic came out on that one there's another kill though for guts xavier really reeling from this opportunity seven play players in the lobby remaining xavier need to step it up here it looks like it's all going to be kicking off dev he'll get that first pick onto the mutant a what? second over onto blue what a beautiful read on that situation it's only going to leave three defenders left and a 3v2 is very possible they've only got just less than 30 seconds left the creep in will happen but they have perfect crossfires the attackers will have to salvage this we're going to see onagiri by himself 1v3 he'll see if he can get any picks but he's running out of time dev it's only 15 seconds left no one's going to peek him. This is the best play yeah, for the defenders. Go. They've even got smoke babes to deny the entry in almost oh, every no. entrance. Five and well, if you're on a Geary here, you take the loss and you take it on the chin. As you say, Jess, no opportunity there. Guts with a great early two picks, thanks to Yura, and then piling on that, not giving Xavier any opportunity to come back. Great stuff to see from the Japanese and the Thai team on the back foot at the moment, looking to as some kind of retort but hey you lose two players in the first 30 seconds and you think all right you know stuff happens sometimes just sit back let's you know redo let's attack a different bomb site you know we can lose one round that's not such a big deal 
I think what it came down to was the, Xavier was sort of thrown aback when they had so much aggression so quickly that Jaeger peeking out through garage door and taking down Red Sun on the Maverick, they sort of went, ooh, oh my God, we're not quite prepared for this aggression just yet. And they had to pick up some players and then work it out. And they changed their push twice. They actually rota Attack rotated twice throughout that round, Dev, they because they lost both of their hard breaches. They had one left. Wasn't enough, but now we'll move upstairs and see whether or not Guts can show the same level of prowess on this site. However, I think what's really important here, we saw a six pick over to the Amaru. I don't think the Amaru actually is going to make much of a difference here unless they're going to possibly use it with a hatch or they're hoping to get high ground very quickly. There's not a lot of places, at least on this site, where you can actually make an Amaru really work. Yeah, the Amaru recently buffed with steel wave mm. right much easier much quicker to get your gun up after you go in through a window so hey it's a nice but um is it gonna make it viable not sure xavier yeah look if any team is gonna make an operator viable it's probably gonna be savior or q confirm like these titans they love to throw out some weird punches whether it's a finker or a blackbeard it looks to be the amaru yeeting on straight in early control here in gym i should hope that there's been a pre-placed drone doesn't shoot that camera, doesn't want to reveal his position. Napu getting very aggressive, but JJ's watching this angle and he's going to win that. JJ, such an experienced player from his time on Noah Rengo and doing guts justice here. Oh, that was such a bad entry there from the Amaru. Unfortunate for him. He looked like he just wanted to make a quick entry, take them off guard, but that's not what he did there. If anything, he was taken off guard and They'll get that CCTV wall open very comfortably. All they had to do was Maverick a tiny hole, shoot the Mute Jammer. Excellent. Thatcher is banned, so of course you could just place Mute Jammers down, but possibly maybe even a bandit trick could have been implemented. But when you've got a Maverick, it's really hard to do. So that wall will sit comfortably open, and now they need to decide, do we get garage control or do we pinch over from logistic and bedroom side? And given their current placement dev, I'm going to make the assumption they'll do a bedroom pinch push from CCTV. I feel like it's what's become more meta recently. Mm. Having that one player on the kennel side, and then for the most part, you commit to the construction side. But imagine if Napier was still alive, right? You'd be in a 5v5 with good time management, but now you're fighting from behind a little bit. Yura also roaming downstairs. We saw how much of an impact that Yura could have in that previous round, and playing the Vigil as well. Save so you need to be extra careful of these flanks. Scout is very aware that there is a new gem on this wall as well. So Red Sun will open up below and get rid of it for him. So now both walls on both objectives are opened. Oh. And as I say that, that will get completely impact trick by the Maestro. Beautiful bit of insight there that he had to say, well, I need to impact trick if I'm going to stop this. And that Maverick hole they've opened will actually be to their demise. Oh. If he can get that straight through the Maverick hole, and unfortunately he cannot. So the Habana will open lines of sight. It won't be an entry hole, but it will allow them to have beautiful lines of sight. What a shot! The entry is happening, Dave. It looks like they might want to go on it. Nonagiri has cleared garage now. Another pincher point for Xavier to utilize. Guts as well found the entry onto site. Euro was still off on the roam, but Xavier won't get too ahead of themselves here. Light to push back up to the top of cash stairs. Euro, can he make the impact? That's what needs to happen. But DCH, here's the impact grenade. Yura looking to flank on around. JJ holding the fort. Yura misses those shots, and that's detrimental to him all on light now. One versus two. Just found the first kill, but Xavier do lock it out. A successful attack here on Takash. We could have seen a brilliant flank from the vigil there. Unfortunately, as he pulled out his impact, he noticed the player sitting on the other side of the wall and I thought to myself oh no that's a construction hmm. hole that you should have already either had pre had open or have thrown way before you committed to that push so unfortunately for Vigil he uh, wasn't able to have the impact and that might have changed the outcome of that round ever so slightly so one round apiece moving into round three and it looks like they'll move over to gym and bedroom now not likely to uh, want to try CCTV again which is fair enough I think giving another side a go is probably the play and well, the Dokubi will be sixth pick to oh, yeah. a sledge. So some grenades in hand actually work really well on a site like Gym Bedroom, especially when you've got Defender a lot of utility you need to get rid of and you're never going to be close enough to get direct access. So 
you know, two pairs of grenades on that team is probably going to fare really well on bedroom. Especially when you got ops like the Goyo and the Maestro here. And, uh, but, you know, I've got to say, I'm kind of sad that we're not seeing the uh, the super spicy Xavier. Uh, I know we, we had a little bit of a cheeky Amaru pick there, but none of the Finca, none of the Dekebi that we've seen in the past. Dokkabi, I'm told I keep saying it wrong. Dokkabi. Red Sun's a bit of a prolific Dokkabi player. Loves that boss GA cog. Absolutely styled on Fnatic. At six Invitational qualifier using that. Fortunately, Xavier just fell short of all the finish shine in that qualifier. But... As for Xavier here, looking to be a heavy hard reach focus. You know, they're bringing all three hard reaches. And you'd see a lot of teams would opt to bring maybe more soft reach, maybe an IQ, something else. But no, going for all three hard reaches. And I've got to say, Xavier kind of need it because Guts are doing a great job at not only countering the hard breach utility with impacts, but also just shut out killing players who are playing the Thermite and the, and the Maverick or the, the Hibana and the Maverick as it was in the first round. Well, it looks like the defensive side of Guts has decided that they're going to do a cash hold for this gym bedroom site, but they won't reinforce the CCTV walls, which is fair enough. There's only 10 reinforcements that you can employ, so of course they're only going to get so many, and it's very much likely that they put a lot of those reinforcements on the side of cash as well. So if they want to gain access to uh, cash, they're going to make need to make sure that there's nothing on the wall. There's no bandit tricking. There's no mute jammers. Of course, not, mute not being featured in this round makes it a heck of a lot easier for them. But they've already got this wall open over on Jacuzzi. So this is very good timing from the attackers. They just need to make sure that they're careful of the C4 below in the hands of Yura. You're hanging out downstairs. The hole's pre-opened in the floor in that B bomb site and gym. Great opportunity to throw a C4 up through those beams and land it. You're is positioning into that right now. Scatman and Red Sun get in too early. You will be ready with a C4. Pre-ripped. Tossed up through these holes, you can kill any player who comes in through that hallway. Yura, does he have information? This could be it! And Scatman, say good night, good sir. And that thermite gone. That was beautiful read into that. I said, you've got to be careful of Bandit below with the C4. And we just absolutely lived through that. Of course, they're not aware of, this, of the uh, ADS and that collects one grenade, but Napu will make good use of his own. And that looks like the Goyo shield will be gone as well. So that's cash opened up for them. But Construction has Lily. He has perfect feet holes here. And they know exactly where he is. And he'll decide to rotate out. Smart idea. Less than a minute left. They've made really good time on this, and they've still got four players on the board to help them stop this execute. Four versus four now. Guts get, did really put a stop to Xavier's plans of opening up that bathroom, but the reply here onto light does mean that there's a bit more of an opportunity, a bit more of a chance for Xavier. Plant being forced down. Yura hears it, going for this flank. Surely this is going to be the impact, and there it is. Guts Gaming collapse, nice on easy to shut down Xavier and any hope of planting here in gym. I'm unsure why the Zofia chose to vault into gym there. It was actually unnecessary given the gym hallway is one of the key areas you need to hold especially when the plant is going down there must have been something going on in bedroom for example where well unfortunately they weren't able to hold those lines of sight as the plant was going down so another round going in the hands of guts gaming not a surprise given they have shown such prowess with their utility their site setup and a lot of their gadgets we've seen those evil eyes not getting destroyed you know providing a lot of intel throughout that round so i'm really impressed by this guts gaming so far but we do have to sort of preface it dev Let's just say, let's give Xavier look, you know, benefit of the doubt. They're on attack. Attack can be hard. A lot of maps are defender sided. I might eat my words later, but you know what? I'm happy to throw it out right here and now. Yeah, credit to Guts though. And a lot of the plays that they're making are highly impactful. Early on in the round, for example, taking out the Thermite completely stops Xavier any hope of opening up that public uh, bathroom wall and I, I guess they could have tried with the with the maverick they, they put a few holes but realistically you're probably not able to sit there and open a proper hole with the maverick and i don't know what was happening with the hibana elsewhere but um yeah as you've seen some flashes of greatness too got seemed to be just a little bit ahead of the curve and as we rotate back down to this bottom floor bomb site let's recall that 
previous time around, Xavier lost two of their hard breaches straight out of the gate, thanks to Euro just running around the Jaeger and Garage. And that's the kind of thing you might get away with once, but fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I don't think Xavier will fall for it a second time. The only way they can fall for that again, and, and we're not seeing that SSG roam, so they've actually decided to do a little bit more of a turtle hold here on this given setup. That means that they're able to not be quite as extensive with their roam. They're going to have to lurk very close to site in blue and those surrounding stairs. So I don't think we'll see too much aggressiveness from Guts in this particular round, just given their setup doesn't really warrant it. They're going to be waiting for them to open up the hatches, and you can see here the Maverick has decided He's going to go for the blue hat. This is an interesting decision, Deb, given there's a Kaid on the board, so why not go mm. for the hatches that are Kaided? Yeah, I was thinking the same, but it looks like uh, Lilia does have two deployed, ready to trick if the... Uh, I'm not sure what the thought process is here, because, like, that just banned. So usually you would sit here ready to pull it off. Okay, pulling it off if the Mavericks trick starts to come out. Mm. And now Lily can use that Electroclaw on a different hatch since... The electric claws are pretty much ineffective. And there you go. Thank you, medics. The electric claw on the kitchen hatch. So still with one in the pocket, Lily can attempt to throw the electric claw onto the church wall if Xavier want to breach that. Yeah, I'm glad he actually had that in arm's reach. He could pick it back up. And I don't think there'll be enough gas in the canister for the Maverick to get all of those hatches. He already used one line on the blue hatch. And oh, he'll also open up the uh, the uh, hatch over... Uh, uh, I've forgotten my call. Cool. already. No, he's opened it over uh, church, near church, of course. And oh, I doubt he'll be able to get all of the hatch open over on kitchen. He could possibly open it up enough to spot the Kaid, the electric claw. But Onigiri, he'll start things off. And he's going to get a pick on a JJ. And things are kicking off in extraordinary fashion here as they decide the pinch is the way. Two nice entries on through blue. Still Xavier focusing on this moto take, though. Crazy up Papillon on the long angle, and there's a nice shot there onto Onagiri. But three versus four. Xavier looking to push on through, and okay, that's not a great way to open up the church wall. I'm pretty sure that that thermite charge did not destroy the soft part of the wall. No, it was just reinforced from the side. I'm crazy. Never mind. Light's pretty crazy too, taking off Red Sun's head. But eventually, this church wall is opened up, and Scatman's going to follow that with a kill onto Light. Three versus two now for the Thai team, and Lily. Gets one before traded yeah, back all on Crazy body. Papillon. One versus one. DCH versus Crazy Papillon for the round. 20 seconds to work with. The diffuser in the hands of this Hibana. Patiently, Crazy Papillon trying to bait this out, and it works. DC gets off that diffuser. Start to force it down now. Seven second plan time. Feels like the world. Crazy knows that he can pre fire. But there's the great shot from DCH on that retake. No way you'd expect the quick swing in the pre fire. What a clutch in the 1v1. That was brilliant from DCH there. He baited it a couple of times. That's what you need to do, especially when you're short on time. But when he realized he was down to the 10 second mark, he had to get that plant down or he had to go for the kill. He elects for the plant. The Maestro is not aware that he's putting it down in its full entirety. And as a result, he's able to bounce up after the plant goes down and just, well, that pre-fire, as you said, was absolutely magical. And now that's two rounds apiece. This game is a lot closer than I think a lot of people were giving it justice. And and I think DCH been a key player for the past round, but Napu, for example, has been really showing how his utility usage has been very valuable for his team. Yeah, and Xavier, in contrast to the game we saw earlier tonight, not so much focus on this kitchen hatch. And I think it's probably with that Thatcher band. It's oh. not. Oh, come oh. on, mate. Mate, come on. Look, we would just say mate. Like, if you've ever heard two of you see something, <laughs> mate, that you just go, mate. That's what happened there. Dev. Oh, oh honey. Yeah. Bit of a. Uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, like, it happens. Like, I mean, we've seen team kills at land finals in like match point overtime like we've seen that before you know it happens mm -hmm. but yeah it's uh, it's never good is it and you're uh, not able to reinforce as well particularly on this bomb site usually you have a lot of reinforcements you need kennels wall garage walls oh surely not Nate, you can't get away with that one <laughs> the pest just gets picked up again so this was already won previously by xavier on their attack Despite losing that player early, we'll see if Guts can fix their mistakes. 
Looks like the attackers are very wary that they've got that man count on their side. So they're just going to be swiftly opening up the lines of sight they need from Garage. And, well, the defenders have decided they're going to barricade everything downstairs so that if anyone does come rushing up, they're going to at least hear the barricades break. Mm. And they still got, uh, like we said before, got a couple of those hard breaches. The Maverick makes this so easy, Dev. I mean, once you get rid of that mute jam or you get rid of the bandits that are on there, you could just get this wall opened up in the first 30 seconds. And I don't Ooh, know if he picked wait. that. Was that impact tricked through the Maverick hole? I think so. In fact, I think the exp it looks like the explosion actually happened on the floor, but the explosion emanated through the hole. Crazy Papillon's going to try it again. This time it doesn't work. I think the Thermite placed by Scatman was just a bit too high. Nice adaptation mid-round from Xavier to salvage that one. It would have been disastrous otherwise. But now, Xavier, they've got done that first point on the checklist. And they need to progress from here. Looks like you'll see all the anchors sort of bunching up on the top of Cash Stairs there. And I think they're just waiting to see whether or not they're going to zoom in. I actually also think that a couple of the C4 players that are playing on those stairs are actually waiting for the execute to happen so that they can go below with their C4s. And if that's what they plan on doing with it, that's a great use of utility, especially plant denial. So they don't have any smoke. They don't really have any other plant denial. So that's a really good adaptation. I think they'll need to employ if they want to win this round because there's a construction take happening alongside the already open CCTV wall. And Guts have also lost that X factor of Yura. Ooh, Napier spots out the Maestro on the drone. Crazy Papion looking to retake the Kennels wall at the moment. Onagiri just watching for that. But Xavier, when will they make this push happen? Unfortunately, you may be hearing a little bit of a static noise at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry <laughs> about it. It just happens when the Mute Jammer catches a sick drone and then, you know, unfortunately, production uh, can't change it at the moment, but they will change it when they can. And as we speak about that, grenades come sailing through, but that particular operator goes down and on a geary oh, no. he'll be able to take a papio and we spoke about this these c4s are so integral to stopping the plant they don't even need to challenge the diffusers actually on the ground they can just sit back and feel very comfortable here and i take that back it wasn't even the default no way. Plant. they're not even covering it dev they're not even watching they're defending players and well they're going to get that round off he needs to get the kill no the will occur he can't see the player <laughs> And he'll stand up and take the kill and light clutches that from the depths of despair to give guts another round that quite honestly should have gone to the attackers because even i had the wool pulled over my eyes there dev i thought they were planting all the way over in cctv and instead they faked it out and planted in cash what was that a one versus two one versus three for light something Absolute nonsense. Crazy that he was able to deny the plant in the dying moments there. And you've got a feel for Xavier there, thinking that Cash was safe and just hunting for the player through CCTV, but allowing that plant to be denied was detrimental by the end of it. That said, Xavier still have two rounds in the half. And Guts, well, if they can lock out another defense here, they'll be probably fairly happy moving into the second half. But of course, with Maverick on the board, I'd say that T to be frank, I, I think that Clubhouse isn't actually that defender favored with, with Maverick in. Maverick mm. is so good at opening up. Like, you, you're never worried about, for example, the Kennels Wall. You're never worried about uh, the hatches if there's Kaid on the board. So even a 3-3 three, three here for Guts, in my eyes, is an advantage moving into the second half on the attack. Yeah, we speak about trying to have that balance on defender side of maps of, you know, you at least want to get two or three defensive rounds so that when you go into attack, you're not really feeling like you've got to, a lot of pressure up against the, the scoreboard. But I think you're right. There's a bit of balance here from both teams, but that's a clutch. There have been a, clutch, a couple of clutch rounds there where I think Xavier, if they had have read into the situation a bit better, they'd adapted a little bit more, they would have won those rounds as well. So I think Guts is teetering on the edge here of making sure that they don't have Xavier read into them too heavily, so that's why we saw an SSG roam one round and then a turtle on the next. So we'll see whether that uh, continues into future rounds. And well, I'm interested to see if uh, Onigiri, who's already taken a heck of a lot of health off, will be able to get picked Damn. off. But instead, Crazy Papian goes down as the trade. 
A lot of early aggression once again from Guts, and well, the time they did win a successful Church Arsenal defense was when Euro on the Roman Garage managed to find two picks in the first minute onto the hard breaches. But since then, Xavier has been much more on the ball with their attacks, aside from a few mishaps. Now revisiting this SSG roam that Guts did in the first round, but not to so too much success thus far. Xavier, fairly confident on their map clear, but time will tell. Onigiri took a lot of his life in that initial engagement, that early aggression we'd seen on multiple rounds before. And this sledge will dispatch of those castle barricades very quickly. That's very helpful. They're expecting some bar presence as well. You can see the ping coming out and all they'll need here is a drone to really tell them if there's any presence there at all or not. So they're stalling out a lot here when well, all they need is just a little bit of intel and the Maverick will begin to open up the dirt tunnel as is his job. But the three hard breaches are still in play here for Xavier. So they still have a lot of options to get onto site and still over a minute left on the clock. And Gus just playing patiently for now. They know when to be aggressive and when not to. And after losing that first player, I think they decided, okay, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Xavier, man advantage, but not necessarily health advantage on a Geary so low. Where will the push come from? Looking to be potentially a church wall execute once again. Likely to thermite that church wall, but Scatman not quite onto it just yet. Just waiting for the right moment. Not sure whether or not Scatman even has another exothermic. He does. He's looking to place it onto the church wall. Not sure if they're going to be able to impact with this. No one's nearby to attempt it, so that's not going to happen. And Yura that goes down inside you. blue, so blue control goes in the hands of the attackers, but JJ decides he's going to burst out of the breach and gets traded almost instantaneously. That's a good C4, but it misses its mark. And now we've got four attackers against two defenders. This is a harsh one for Guts Gaming. Napu looking to force that plant down in black box. Guts, left. is there any answer? Light taken out. All on Lily now. No C4, no worries, no chance. And Xavier to lock that one out. Tie us for the half, three points each. And uh, I think they're going to be pretty happy with that one. Yeah, I'd be very happy with that, especially when you get those in, you know, colliding picks you, one after the other. And that's something that teams are looking for, especially if you don't get traded out. Of course, the castle was able to take a couple of trades of his own. But other than that, a lot of the defenders were caught isolated by themselves. And when you're an attacking team, you love that. You love if you can catch an attacker who's by a uh, defender who's by themselves. You take them out of commission and there's no trades or refrag ability to worry about. So that's a really good evening around counts there from Xavier. They're actually showing that they're warming up a lot more into this next round. And well, as we see things switch around, we'll see Xavier move on to defense. And they're going to be rocking a smoke and Kaid, Maestro and Mute. So nothing too out of the ordinary here, too off meta. Yeah, a little bit of uh, wall denial, a little bit of hatch denial, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. From uh, overall in Clubhouse thus far, I feel like this match and the Fnatic Giants match earlier tonight, the things that have been super impactful is the, the combination of the attack, not only one, getting a, a strong avenue onto the bomb site, for example, opening up church wall, but two, also having some kind of pincer from another place, whether that's uh, Red Sun pushing up from Dirt, or I can't remember which player it was, I think it was Napu, or no, it was Onagiri pushing up from uh, from Blue, from Oil Pit as well. So always having that little second bit just to, to prod and, and push at the defense has really been key for a lot of these attacks. And Guts are definitely gonna have to take that into their own hands now that they are in fact on the attacking side at a 3-3. I mean, it's not, uh, I feel it's pretty, obviously, as even as the scoreline can get, right? Right, and I mean. Goes to show that well, this team's pretty evenly matched, but Guts, I feel like they've looked like the better team thus far, but let a few moments slide. Yeah, let a, let a few moments slide in. I think they've actually let an operator slide here, Dev. There's no Habana on the board. And whilst that's okay not to bring three full hard breaches, if you lose one of your hard breaches, especially a Maverick, uh, you know, if the Thermite doesn't open up the kitchen hatch, for example, and, well, there goes the Kaid, so there's no Kaid tricking, so at least that's been dispatched. But it can be very difficult to open up hatches where you can get Z-Ford at the same time, and that's what kitchen is. So maybe they're hoping they can focus on, you know, doing an armory take... Uh, 
uh, rather a um, a church taken and, and open up the hatch that way then open up church ball if that's what they focus on then I can understand those picks but if you if you're hoping to open up yeah and this is what they're looking for so they are going to open up the bar hatch and do a church take very much by the looks of it but as we saw Xavier do on attack we need to see the pinch happening like you said before Deb we need to see them pushing from blue or dirt if they have any hope of pinching the site for this plan. My impression of the thought process here for Guts is, well, with Kaid on the board and Thatcher banned, there's no real way you can get the electric claws off the kitchen hatch. You could try with some grenades, but it, it's mm. risky business. And the Hibana is really ideal for that kitchen hatch because you don't have to get yourself too exposed to C4s and, and angles through the floor, whereas the Thermite and Maverick doesn't have that luxury. So if you're not going to go for kitchen hatch, just don't even bring the Hibana. Maybe you can mm -hmm. afford the uh, the doubles, the Fear and Ash instead. And, well, you're up. Seems to be that pincer point from oil pit but thus far xavier waiting patiently on the bomb site holding their ground maybe not so patiently after all onagiri eager for a fight bottom main stairs i think onagiri is hoping to even out the number count since they lost dch so early on and the church take oh, will begin and as i said onagiri he can even it out he's ever so lonesome I hope he doesn't peek anymore, however, Dev, because you've evened up the number counts now. You need to focus on that plant denial. Napier will sit in the corner of church. It gives him a little bit of an avenue of escape by popping that smoke babe as well. So this will allow them to open up church wall. But guess what? There's a mute jammer there, and instead they're just going to have to frag out. Two versus three now for Xavier trying to hold fast. But Napier, with the confidence, peeks out, gets shut down for it. Onigiri is going to do his best. That's a second kill on the round. Spots out that other player bottom main stairs, but the Thermite wide swings from Moto, and that's Guts to take their first attacking round with some nice confidence there. I've got to admit, I was sweating for a moment, Jess, but the Japanese mm. have it in hand. I, when I saw that Mute Jammer still there, Dev, and I went, oh my goodness, they've committed to a church push, but the Mute Jammer is still on the wall. You cannot open the wall when there's a Mute Jammer present. So I didn't know how they were possibly going to make the entrance. Unfortunately, the defenders had decided to make a peek over on jail slash ash wall. And when they peeked that, they gave up their lives. It was unnecessary. They gave the attackers picks and that's what allowed them to win that round really because they had actually no real access to the site. So if you're a defender in that way and you, you know, you've got a couple of walls up that haven't been breached, it's better off to play a little bit more passive aggressive and focus on entry denial like the smoke babes, etc. It's a great point about that mute jammer on the church wall denying the thermite charge. And I, with Thatcher band, you can't just, all right, chuck an EMP down and clear out that mute jammer. But I, I've seen other teams you know, earlier tonight, we saw Giants, uh, not necessarily successfully, but attempting to throw grenades over the top to remove the mute jammer. Eventually, Xavier did get rid of, sorry, uh, Guts did get rid of the mute jammer because the thermite charge detonated, the exothermic detonated right at the end there. I'm not sure what, how they uh, actually got rid of the mute jammer though. So uh, I, uh, I guess it'll, uh, We'll see this round, right? Uh, maybe they'll have some more success in uh, opening that wall a little bit earlier. Maybe not getting it too close for comfort as, uh, as it was that round. They've got two grenades on the hands of white and not much else to really deal with it. So if they want to get rid of it, like you said, they need to be careful in saving that utility for those key moments there. And I would expect them, given the Kai being in play, to do exactly the same push. I can't imagine they would want to sort of focus on Kitchen, even though it could be a good push for them. I think it's better off that they focus on just an ignoring places of really key C4s and, and focusing on that uh, church push instead. So if they can focus on getting rid of that Mute Jammer later in the round, that will work in their favor. Yeah, I have a feeling that Xavier, or rather Guts, is gonna keep doing the same strategy. Oh, that's an angle and a half. Onigiri is so confident. We know how much Onigiri wants to take these fights and more often than not, he seems to be winning them, but an early pick the way of Guts could lend the Japanese a hand to really cement themselves. When it was uh, Guts' defense, they opened it strong, got their defense, and then it was kind of like a trade of rounds, right? They won the first, mm. and then Xavier won one, and they won one, and Xavier won one. Well, Guts have started on the uh, on the offense here and seem to be doing pretty well. Xavier haven't managed to win a defense yet out of that one attempt so far. So I think for the Thai team, I've got to be sweating at the moment, hoping they can perform a little bit better as time progresses. Well, talking about the Thai team performing, we've got Onigiri hoping that 
he can get yet another opening pick. The shield will go down in the hallway, which is a very important piece of utility to get rid of. That blocks a lot of line of sight. And it looks like this kitchen take is what they're looking to do. They've got a lot of vertical holes opened, and it's very hard to see for if all the roof is open up above you. So that's probably a good tactic from the attackers there. I don't know whether or not Scatman had utilized his C4 yet onto the buck, and he hasn't. So he's kept it in hand. This is really important. But DCH, opening kill again, wow. Dev. From such a passive position as well, holding these long angles, lied to Pylon as well with Scatman going down. Finally, that kill comes out through the floor. Xavier very much on the back foot. A whole minute for Guts now to do with what they will. Two exothermic charges for JJ as well to open up the church wall if he so desires. Xavier now picking even more aggressive, desperate to find something to even this up. It doesn't even look like they were able to get the Kaid off of the hatch in the kitchen. In fact, I think they were just using it in order to be able to uh, get some lines of sight. But that grenade that misses it, Mark, we spoke about this. Keep your grenades for the Mute Jammer. They did, and they missed its target. So they can't open Church Wall unless they replace the Exothermic. And he did with great effect, and now the wall is open, but there's only 20 oh. seconds left. They have to zoom in here. Their shots have to connect. There's only two defenders, but with some smoke baits and some great amount of rounds on the board. Zooming oh. in on the ash, he'll take one. The plant will begin. It's up to the maestro on his own. He'll pick one. Red Sun will get picked off in exchange. And, well, when you got a 2v4, Dev, I mean, there's a lot to be asking of your uh, anchors in that particular moment, I think. I thought the 2v4 was possible there while the smoke was alive, denying that entry into church through the exothermic breach, but not to be. Not sure which player it was actually that was uh, was playing the smoke there, but just, just shy of it. And uh, well, a near flawless round by the end of it for Guts, only dropping the one player in the dying seconds. And I've got to say, Jess, Guts do seem to be the outlier here. They do seem to have quite a significant advantage performing much better than uh, but than Xavier, not just by piling the rounds on, but also finding cheeky ways around the setup that Xavier brought to the table. For example, we kept talking about that mute jammer, right? Mm. They didn't even destroy the mute jammer. They yep. just, there was only one mute jammer to cover three walls and the diameter of the area of effect from that mute jammer does not expand far enough. So Guts just went all the way to the left side and it was barely outside the jamming effects, the radius of that mute jammer and yeah I mean, we'll get to them it open nice on easy from that yeah i think that's something they're going to read into into the future as well i mean if there's one mute jammer to cover three walls as you said you just need to change your placement to begin with it can be hard because your shoulder might clip the hallway and you might die to some of the the lines of sight opened up in armories so that can be tricky but i think overall they dealt with it well but their time management was poor so that's why the exothermic you know wouldn't have mattered if they couldn't get in but Two Five defenders against four attacking players rushing in. I mean, nine times out of ten, you'll see the attackers, attackers take that one. However, we'll be moving on to CCTV. I'm not sure whether or not uh, they're just going to do that initial pinch push that we expect from teams is the new meta of pushing CCTV. Open up the CCTV wall. If you want to get garage control, cool. And if you don't, go to construction, open up that wall as well, and then attempt to pinch on in that way. So I'm hoping to see something of that effect from Guts Gaming here. And indeed, thus far, quite a bit of pressure from the west side. Shots through windows, Crazy Papillon wasting one of those ADSs on the west side window. JJ and Light together going to play uh, tag team to open up this main wall. In fact, it is the electric wall, so Light's just going to unreinforce the wall using what we call the Maverick trick. DCH is saying, all right, well, you're going to do that. I'm just going to take my claw back and, and chuck it on the cash wall instead. Great adaptation there. I mean, if you can hear the Maverick going, there's no point leaving your Electric Claw there. We've seen both teams in great effect use their Kaid to ensure that they, you know, are a little bit more adaptable with the way they deploy their uh, utility. And Buck will make short work of that soft wall, which, as Dev said, once you Maverick across and get rid of the reinforcement aspect of the wall, you can then make it a soft wall which then gets opened up very quickly. Good to see them using the utility on Zephyr. That's something that's sorely lacking in a lot of teams these days. They'll get into sight and there's still an evil eye up spotting them consistently. So it's good that they're making good work of that. And well, Light still has two grenades as well. So I think uh, Guts Gaming, they're in a really good position here. They've got a lot of time left on the board. 
Yeah, only just under half the round remaining, which is a lot of time in the grand scheme of things. And so much ground taken, full roam clear for everything that they need. You're on the longest angle you've ever seen. All the way into cash, and it does appear to be an execute onto cash from construction. But DCH still standing safe along that reinforced wall. There is still a Roma downstairs. It's Napew. Lily's on to watch that flank. Napew creeping up. Will he be successful? Oh, Lily spots out that mute. And surely successfully holding this flank. Napew maybe to rotate. But of course, with a C4 in the pocket, could play for the late game and deny the plan. Yeah, Napew below. Not only does he have the C4 in his hand, but he also has the opportunity to look up through the hatch, but he misses it. JJ will be able to start the exothermic, but has it been tricked? Oh, no. I don't know, but Napew will get picked off below. Good read by Lily. And yes, Ooh. the electric claw got the exothermic, but it doesn't matter. Yura's popping off. He wants to end this round, wall open or not. And it's all up to two players. Again, some good shots from the Maestro coming out. He'll get one but he won't get another DCH. He'll have to clutch this 1v3. He'll get the Diffuser Planter, and he'll just need to clutch out the Oh my others. god! Is he able to put it together, Dev? No, he's still <laughs> shot down by the God of Yura, and my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, that was almost a redemption arc for DCH, who's been the opening kill of most of these rounds thus far. Both of Ooh. those players were on a 3K, running for that 4K. My goodness, what a way to close it. And Yura popping off so far. Are we going to have a real quick rehost? So you're going to have to see our beautiful faces for a minute while we talk about Guts and Xavier and where we are at the moment. And you know where that is? Match point towards Guts Gaming and a well-earned one thus far. Even when things look pretty tough, you mentioned how DCH was successful in mm -hmm. destroying the Exothermic with his Electric Claw on the cash wall. But Yura just says, no, Attackers I want to kill everybody. And I was really worried when they were managing to uh, trick that exothermic, that second exothermic, because the diffuser was all the way in construction. Had they transferred the, mm. the diffuser over to the open CCTV wall, then maybe we would have seen a different outcome. But it didn't matter. I, didn't, I couldn't even see where Yura had burst on in. And, and overall, his picks were absolutely integral. But DCH, let's give him a little bit of a vouch here, Dev. He almost clutched that round by tricking the exothermic, by getting those double and even triple kill, I think, in the end there. But Yura was the one who had to shut him down in the end. Mm. The last player alive. That was a wild round. And just put yourself in DCH's shoes for a minute and think, okay, you've just successfully tricked the wall. Huge. A little bit safer in the sight. You've just gotten two kills with the Org. You whip out the revolver. You even find one more. Suddenly, this is a one versus one but you've got the revolver and you've already had one gunfight. So you've got what, one bullet left? So, I mean, imagine the stress in in those moments. I, I, I can't begin to uh, to consider what that would have been like. And for you to keep his cool and, and clutch that one, nice work. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're wondering exactly what's going on right now and why you have to look at our mugs for a little bit longer, we've had to jump to a quick rehost. A little bit of issues with a player, I'm not even sure which team dev, doesn't really matter. We'll quickly know. get the players it's back in the low. I mean, it doesn't matter. We don't really care. I mean, whatever. It's a 6-3, though. It's match point. Like, Guts, they're doing really well. Mm -hmm. I mean, Guts are absolute monsters, to be honest. Like, i got to yeah. say, Guts, you guys know what you're doing, mate. And if we have a look at their form so far, I think a lot of people are probably thinking, you know, Guts who, right? I know Nora Rengo, I might know Cyclops, mm -hmm. but you know, Guts last season in the Pro League, they actually ended up fourth in Japan. So... You think fourth? Well, no, that's not number one. That's not number two, two <laughs> number three, like, you know, fourth. But they had some fantastic games and they ended up with uh, seven victories, which they actually had more map wins than Norengo mm -hmm. above them. But Norengo just went and had an open season on draws and went seven draws. So Guts is a team to look out for. And I think that especially with their performance so far over Xavier, I'm super keen to see how they match up against not only the other Japanese teams, but also teams like your Fnatic and your other SEA teams like uh, Q Confirm and of course the big ones in Giants as well. Yeah, I think it's really important to note, ladies and gentlemen, especially if you're just tuning on in, APAC North League now encompasses multiple sub-regions. 
So all of these subregions will be coming together and playing against each other for probably the first time ever. Maybe they've scrimmed together. Maybe they've had some other things behind closed doors. But on your screens, these are the first time we'll ever see these teams going head to head, especially in this tier one capacity. So that's huge. I think that that's amazing that these teams have this platform mm. to play on now. Yeah, it's like previously these teams would only play each other on LAN or in scrims, right? You would either just be practicing in scrims, in which case it's just practice, right? Or you would be playing on LAN for a spot at the global finals. Like there was right. there was nothing in between. But now instead of having all these separate leagues with eight teams in them where you might have Japan where like let's say the top five teams are really good, but maybe there's, you know, it's not as, as strong through and through and not as competitive throughout the entire thing. We have 12 teams in the APAC North League, which is basically a super league of all of the best teams from Japan and Korea and Thailand, Southeast Asia, wherever it is. And that's been just fantastic to see so far, especially we have a little bit of a clash of play styles and a clash yeah. of metas as well. Yeah, it's good you bring up Clash of Playstyles here because as I was researching these teams over the past couple of weeks, I'm looking at Guts Gaming and I'm going, wow, they've got a really aggressive playstyle here. Mm, I don't know. Oh, but they also have a lot of plants down on their statistics as well. And then I look over at other teams across the board, like Cyclops, for example, their previous six months, they had like no plants. They were just so hyper aggressive. It's they're like, having... like every round today. <laughs> Which is amazing because I did say, and ladies and gentlemen, I will back myself up here. I did say if... If Cyclops manages to get 10 plants over the entirety of this first stage, at least 10 plants, then I will donate over 100 US dollars to whatever donation charity someone throws at me. <laughs> now, I believe in their first game, they managed to get at least four plants alone. It was six. So it was six. It was six. literally every round that they played on their attacking half. <laughs> This is why, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot rely on old statistics. These teams are giving us a new first impression. I was very happily surprised by the brand new Cyclops. We'll call them the brand new because it's the new first impression that they deserve to give us all. And they were very impressive. So I was super happy to see that from them. Yeah, I'm also happy to donate to Charity there, Dev. Don't worry about that one, mate. Yeah, lovely. I'm keen for it. All right. So, Guts, Xavier, 6-3 at the moment. Where are we looking at for the trajectory for this one, Jess? I personally feel like Guts have this in the bag. How many rounds it's going to take, I'm not sure. But Xavier, from their perspective, right, they haven't even won a defense yet. And that's where I start to get concerned for them. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm rooting for Guts at this point. They've impressed me throughout this entire matchup. There have been some things they need to work on, same as Xavier's side, but I'm pretty sure we have some replays to throw up on the board, and maybe you guys at home can make up your own mind about who you think will win this matchup. I've got to say, having it's pretty damning stat to have no successful defenses so far, but as we jump straight into the game, oh. let's get back into it and... Here we are. Three to six is the current scoreline. And uh, yeah, guts. They, uh, they've got some guts. <laughs> oh, Dev. Dad please jokes don't already? Laugh at that. I, please don't laugh at that. I don't, at that. I don't deserve it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll give you the laughs. Don't worry. Someone's going to laugh at your sympathy. jokes. I don't want your sympathy laughs, Jess. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, <laughs> we're on the possibly the last round the penultimate round if guts throw things together here on their attacking round we've seen them do this time and time again where their attacks look sharp but they're not able to adapt in the dying moments dch had those moments of really good success you guys want to skip back in the board you absolutely can he's a player that i would watch out for as an anchor and they're going to repeat that new jammer in the middle there i don't think given the way that they open the wall on church that you couldn't actually adapt that new jammer and have it be placed a little bit more to the right given they've already read into this dev i think they're going to be thinking in their head well oh, if i place my exothermic on the left i can get that wall open very easily so a little counter adaptation from the defense actually might go a long way yeah great point hot guts we know that even when the plan gets thrown out the window yura knows how to clean house so Unfortunately, with that rehearsed, we will have lost all of the, the, the KD stats for these players, but I take our word for it, Yura's been popping off, mm -hmm. as has uh, DCH, had a couple of good rounds as well. But now, progressing on through, Yura taking control of blue. He's caught so many players off guard just by holding these narrow angles, looking towards blue and the rotation hole into church. Meanwhile, the rest of Guts just on the drone to clear out the rest of the map. 
We were talking about the scoreboard needing to be reset due to the rehost. I just want to shout out to JJ, a previous member of Norango. Back in my days, my coaching days, he was a fierce opponent to go up against. And, well, he's been on the anchor and support role for quite a lot of this matchup. And he also had the most frags. I think he ended before the rehost on like 10 kills, Dev. So it's amazing mm. how one of your support players pop off in that kind of capacity. We'll definitely be looking to JJ to ensure that that church wall gets open this round. It has been consistently the strategy for Guts, and it's been a few close calls, some good mute jammers, as you mentioned. I wouldn't be surprised to see DCH use those electric calls as well, hopefully to deny that church uh, church wall as well. In fact, DCH is nearby and with a claw in pocket, so just waiting for Guts to try to clear out that mute jammer. I'm glad you pointed that out, Dev, because I wondered if they were going to adapt to the counter adaptation the attackers had already employed, you know, in just rounds ago. So the fact he has a le an electric claw in his pocket is super key to this round. That new jammer may get displaced by a. Uh... Oh, and I take that back. I'm actually going to stop myself there. This looks like they're Ooh. going to open up the hatch by doing a ground floor side explosion from the exothermic so that's actually a really good placement the reason he placed it on the soft floor there ladies and gentlemen is it completely negates the kaid electrical zapping it you can shoot it from below you can stop it from a multitude of different ways but no one was there to stop that dev so that's awesome the kitchen hatch is now open gotta say hats off to jj for making that happen as well we've talked about him so far one of the most experienced player on this roster but on Agiri, the shutdown path beyond the ash now Xavier with 20 seconds left. They're waiting for Guts to push on in, but Yura, we know how impactful he's been so far. Needs to nail this shot onto the Maestro. Red Sun just waiting for it, but Yura gets the better of him. Three versus three now, but Onigiri is down. No stims to pick himself back up. Yuri for another. Yuri gets traded out though. Just two left for Guts against the two from Xavier. The attempted push in, but Scatman just has to hide. Plank getting forced down. Mayhew has no idea where it is. Can the plank get confirmed? Light gets it down, but Xavier keep their head above the water here and manage to get that disabled. Oh, my heart was racing there, Dev. I absolutely thought, had that a plant gone down two seconds earlier, they would have been able to collect themselves. They would have been able to say, all right, we now have post-plant angles we can hold here. But Napew, coming down the hallway of Armory, that was really good timing. Unfortunately, the buck wasn't able to secure the kill onto the player in blue. And well, there you have it. The retake is coming out. And I think for Xavier in particular, they have no option here, ladies and gentlemen. Seventh round win for Guts means that the entire match is over. They get that three points. So I think for Xavier here, they're hoping to get it up to six, recollect themselves a bit. This is overtime as well. So once it gets to six rounds apiece, we'll move into the first to eight. And uh, well, if uh, Xavier want anything more out of that scoreboard moving forward, especially on the tally board at the moment, they don't want to be sitting at the bottom, James. They don't want to be the kind of guys that go into you know the next play day and say, well, we're, we're the underdogs now. I think they want to be asserting themselves a little bit earlier. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs. Good point about the, the play days as well. Because we have a Swiss system here in APAC North, it means that all of the teams who win their matches today go and play other teams in next week uh, that, uh, that won their games. So it's, uh, it's, it's cool. It means that you have uh, consistently closer and closer games because the teams that win play other teams that win, the teams that lose play other teams that lose, and that's how we uh, determine who is the best. But in terms of Xavier's prospects of a comeback here, uh, I'm not sold, Jess. I, uh, I I know that that was a, a decent round. Like they they caught it back in a two v two, but skin of their teeth, right? And it was only on for a retake as well. But guts seem to have their number for the most part. So there's a few opportunities here. Finally, Xavier Xavier did win on Church Arsenal, but they haven't won cash CCTV yet. And guts looked pretty dominant last time around. I'm just hoping we see Red Sun, who's rocking the clash here. Do the drone hole trick that we'd seen huh. just games ago. I just want him to crouch in front of the drone hole and prove that this actually works when it comes to grenades or more specifically the Zofia concussions because look, DCH is banded tricking. But it doesn't matter. There's a Maverick on the board. It's not like Maverick was banned. So in total, I think they're going to be hoping that well, uh, the uh, shield will just be to delay and give intel. I, I agree with you. I think maybe the strategy was to bandage it, hence mm. the bandit. But 
Yeah, oh, Maverick's on the board. They tried to, uh, Guts tried to deny the Maverick a little bit or make the Maverick's uh, job a bit more difficult by shooting a little bit in the, the bottom and the top to kind of harder to nail the uh, the blowtorch. But, I mean, Guts just removed the soft wall with the buck anyway. Good stuff from Guts, really well played. But yeah, as you said, now Xavier's going to have to adapt and Red Sun try to find the position where he can be of most impact with the clash. That super long angle all the way over and sort of the, the spawn area that Yura's going to be holding. There he is. He's going to rock that one again. It's actually a very, very hard angle to hold because if someone crosses that line of sight, you've only got mere pixels to be able to hit the shot. So it's not the most effective either. It's just really a safety thing. And it gives you a lot of safety from runouts from, you know, garage or blue peaks, or if someone runs out from stock, for example, that's really the only benefit of playing such a long angle from that position. The rest of Guts have rotated over for a master side push. Droning, clearing, crazy to open up an angle into construction, push on through, go forth. Red Sun sussing out what the stitch is. Where's the best place to play for the clash? Not sure, hey? Mm. Crazy when you've, got, when you've got both sides, Dev, of a pinch, where do you sit this clash? Where do you go? Because you've got so many angles. The, only the front of you is covered, so that's a really dangerous part, uh, part of playing clash, is you need to either sit in a corner or know exactly where you're being peeked from. With Thatcher banned, Guts have to get pretty creative here. Wasting that ADS, only one grenade remaining. It goes over, and it does get rid of the bandit batteries, but guess what? DCH is just going to bandit trick, so what are you going to do, JJ? Absolutely nothing. Oh, no. Now they've accompanied the bandit trick and with a clash on the door. This couldn't even be any more oppressive. A trade will come through. But it means that DCH has picked the wrong wall and he'll get traded out from the CCTV wall. And I think for the attackers, this is what they wanted. Yura's going to come bursting through. Still be able to assist in the down of the Jaeger. And it's all up to the clash. He's going to pull out his weaponry. If he can stop the plan, he hears it. He knows he'll get one. Can he get the player? No way. Well, he will. And that's going to clutch the round for Xavier. That is what he was doing in the corner, not engaging a single player. What a brilliant, smart play from the clash there. He didn't even have to shoot the Zovia, Sophia, really, because he knew to wait out that timer there, Dev. Wow. What game sense. I feel like I was spectating that we we heard the plant start to go down, and you're probably thinking, Red Sun, why are you letting that plant? But mm -hmm. nope, it's... Uh, look, if the plant's starting to go down, wait until it hits zero, and then all you have to do is kill the plant. You don't have to kill anyone else, and you instantly win. Really great play there from Red Sun. Risky, but... Well-deserved victory on that round. For Guts Gaming, things are starting to slip away, hey? They had two, three straight attack rounds won, and now Xavier have said, all right, well, look, your church Arsenal won. We, 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 we reckon we can bomb. win that on the defense, and they did, 2v2 retake. And Xavier, well, the first time Guts won cash, it was a clutch anyway. Red Sun happy to make that one work too. So by the end of it, Guts is in a, a position where they need to nail this round down or see through overtime. Unfortunately for Xavier, the rounds that they've been able to collect thus far to bring them back to a possible overtime have not been that convincing. You spoke about it before, Dev. I just don't think I've been that convinced by Xavier's plays thus far. I mean, remaining. last round, you just saw the replay then on the screen. They really barely clutched that from Five the depths of left. nowhere, really. They had the clash who had to stop the plant on the zero second timer. Attackers so I think overall, it's not super convincing. Maybe this will give a little bit more of a uh, confidence boost for Xavier. But I think thus far with, you know, we're getting through a heck of a lot of rounds now, almost on our 12th round as we're currently playing. And that means that by this point, Xavier should already be warmed up. There's no excuse. Better be warm by now, because if you lose this one, oh, that's it. But they've already stared down two match points and haven't faulted. Now light to open up Jacuzzi Wall. Cautious of any peek out from Dirt. It's out the blowtorch. Now unreinforced as well with the Maverick trick. It's crazy. Papillon watches the peek out from Dirt. Light ready to open up the entire top side. Lily here as well to remove the soft part of the wall once it finally does blow. 
I just want to give an absolute shout out to Light Bear Dev. I know, you know, some support and flex players are, go super under the radar, but the way he's been able to use his Maverick Torch to absolute success every single time on every single wall has been really impressive. You'll see players, you know, from all different tier one leagues around the world take a lot of time with their Maverick Glow Torch, but Light, he makes easy work of it. Yep, good util usage. Good tech knowledge from Light. Now, crazy. Gonna put, put some pressure on from these south windows. Remove the ADSs. Turn them out. The C4, though, to come out. Scatman doesn't find anything crazy. Gets away with his life. Xavier extending this hold over in cash. JJ to push on through. Lily as well for support. JJ confident on these entries. Likely to attempt to thermite this wall open. Plenty of drones now to go forth. JJ is so keen to find these gunfights. Dilly now droning forth. Guts know that they have cash control. Yeah, that's good that they deployed drones there rather than just, you know, throwing an exothermic on the wall and wasting it, really. They have the buff. They can open up the side top of cash stairs instead. They don't need to waste an exothermic, but Crazy Papillon will kick things off and Onigiri will go down. That's the dock. That's the ACOG off the board. No more heals available to them, but a couple of C4s on the board for Xavier. So if they're smart, given the time, Dev, they'll go downstairs and wait it out. Attackers have located a bomb. Now, Guts, this is where everything comes to fruition. This is where we depend on you to close it out. 20 seconds remain. Guts have the information, but Xavier just need to hold on for a little bit longer and push over time. Yura, he's been on fire so far. Jumps in through the window. Can he find the band? It looks the wrong way, but Light gets it. Only two players left for Xavier. Red Sun for one. He's clutched it before. Can he do it again? He's taken out all on Napu now, but Guts to steal it. In round 12, they may have made us work for it, but eventually, Guts do prosper and come out on top. What an amazing showing from Guts there. It was almost a beautiful and brilliant comeback from Xavier, but they just couldn't put another one of those close rounds on the board. So we'll see Guts Gaming coming out on top this matchup. But given how close it was, James, I'm excited for both of these teams moving forward in their upcoming matches. That will be on Thursday, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure you check that one out. And um, for Guts Gaming, I think they'll be feeling very strong moving forward. Yeah, hats off. Got to tip your hat to, uh, to Guts there. Um, also, I want to credit Xavier because looking at a... What, 6-3 deficit and managing to claw three rounds in a row, two of which being clutches. Having that dedication and that perseverance to never say, oh, guys, we're going to let this slide. They're going up against a team that they've never played before in the Pro League. They've never played at a LAN either, maybe in scrims before. It's a clash of two different regions, two different play styles, and Xavier gave it their best. Guts, though, have shown that they are a team to be reckoned with here in the APAC North League. Absolutely. I was extraordinarily impressed, like I said, by both teams. Guts, they showed that they were the favoured team for a very good reason, but I wouldn't uh, keep too much away from Xavier at the moment. They're showing that they could be a force to be reckoned with. Just a few mistakes here and there that if they go back through the VOD, I think they'll be able to rectify quite easily, Dev. But I think there are some better analysts on the board who might be able to break this down a little bit better than we can. Let's throw it over to our beautiful analysts. Thanks for being here.